Now you're probably watching this video because your jerk absolutely sucks. Stick with me for the next 15 minutes and I'm going to teach you step by step how your jerk will suck a little less. My name's Sonny Webster and I competed in the 2016 Olympic Games and I got a personal best jerk of 220 kilos. So first things first, there's three different types of jerks that people do. Don't think a jerk is a dirty word, jerk's just an unfortunate name for an Olympic way of the movement, okay? There's three different types, there's the split jerk, the power jerk, or the squat jerk. So the split jerk's the most common type of jerk that people will utilize because it allows for the largest margin error. And this jerk refers to the feet moving one forward and one back into a split position for recovering front foot, back foot, and getting them in line before lowering the bar down from overhead. The next move we're going to talk about is the power jerk. Now the power jerk is very similar to the split jerk when it comes to the dip and drive, but it means that the feet move out to the side instead of forward and back. Again, meaning that there's not much margin for error forward or back in order to chase the bar if it's out of position. Now the final type of jerk is the squat jerk. Now this is easily the sexiest type of jerk that anyone does, which you'll normally see any lifter from Asian countries or sometimes even American lifters opting to use. Now this jerk isn't commonly used because it relies on a huge amount of shoulder stability and strength in order to pull it off, as well as a hell of a lot of mobility. So it's not really the option that we're gonna be going over today. So step one, and the first thing that we're gonna address when it comes to mastering the split jerk is how do you set up your feet for the jerk? Now what's really important is that the feet aren't set too wide. If the feet are set too wide when you go into your split jerk, you're gonna do this, your feet are gonna cross and you're gonna fall over. Not only that, but you're gonna lack leg drive, which isn't gonna help you when you're trying to get as much heart in the bar first before you split. So start with your feet at shoulder width apart and no wider. It may mean that you need to bring your foot in a little bit after your clean, so you're back in that shoulder width apart position. What I will then do is very slightly turn the toes out in my setup position. Just this allows me to dip, load the legs, but also keep the trunk upright when I move on to the dip and drive. But what we're actually gonna look at before we get to that is where the hell do we want our feet to move to? Now the first thing that we need to address is what leg are we putting forward? Now the easiest way to work this out is whatever you kick a football with, if you're gonna fall over, what leg do you put out in front of you? But ultimately, although that's an easy way to work out what leg needs to go forward, it may feel more comfortable for you to move with the other one, which is absolutely fine. But once you decide which leg you're gonna use, stick to it. Don't be trained in both of them, because else you're not gonna get enough repetitions on the correct side. The next thing we need to address is where the feet are gonna be landing, okay? So I'm gonna be putting my right leg forward, that's what's comfortable for me when I'm doing my split jerk. I'm starting now on this cross, I've drawn on the floor with tape. So I'm going to take a little look at this, okay? Now, I've got that line running through the middle of my feet, my feet are shoulder width apart, and then from here, when I'm moving the feet, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dipping, driving, and splitting into my receiving position. And what I want you to notice is that I've got equal distance between the heel of my front foot and the line I started on, and the line I started on and my toe of my back foot. This means I've moved 50-50 balance back and forth. What I also want you to notice that with my lead leg, what I'm focusing on doing is keeping the weight to the outside edge of the front foot and keeping the shin quite vertical there. I don't want to be traveling to the point where knee's traveling too far over the toe because that's going to make it very difficult for me to recover. So I'm staying stacked in that position. Now some people will say that you need to turn the front foot in. I think it's bullshit to be honest. If you do that, then the knee tends to collapse on the inside and put a lot of pressure on the knee immediately. Not ideal. So just have your toes straight ahead. It's easier weight on the outside edge of the foot. Now I just want to show you what's happening with my back leg. So I'm just going to turn side onto you here. Okay? Again, like I said, I'm 50-50 balanced back and forth. But what you'll notice with my back knee is that's staying directly above the line that I started on. I'm always thinking about squeezing my butt cheek on this back leg so that everything stays in a nice line from the line I start on, through the knee, through the hip, through the shoulder, and eventually to where the weight is gonna be. You'll also notice that the back knee is bent and my heel is lifted up off the floor, so it's showing to the wall behind me. This is really important in order to keep my hips square and pointing forward. What you'll notice, and this is a really common mistake for people that do a jerk, is if the back foot gets too straight, not only do the hips opening up put a lot of pressure on the lower back, but it makes it very difficult for me to recover off my front leg first. So bear that in mind. That kind of covers step one in terms of where the feet 
need to move to into the split position. So I want you to go ahead and actually have a practice of this and where your feet need to move to before we move on to step two and talk a little bit more about the dip and drive. So now you're happy with where your feet have got to move to into the split position for the jerk. We're gonna talk about the dip and drive. Now this is arguably the most important element for the jerk. Now the key thing when it comes to getting into a good setup position for the dip and drive is like I said, we've got the feet shoulder width apart, but from here, what I focus on doing is I think about squeezing my butt cheeks and feeling the weight sort of 60, 40 into my heels to toes. Okay, it's really important, especially after a heavy clean, that you feel this weight very slightly in the heels because the likelihood is you're gonna be on your toes and going like this, dying for breath after a heavy clean. So reset yourself into that good position. Now what I want you to notice here, okay, I'm not sticking my ass out in this position. I'm thinking about squeezing my bum and tucking my pelvis underneath so that my core is engaged. This is really important so that when I dip, my torso stays upright, never pushing the bum out from here. Okay? Again, if you struggle with your ankle mobility, then what I would suggest is very slightly turn the toes out. This will help you dip, keeping this torso upright. Now in terms of how low you want to dip, you're going to dip no lower than knee just above the toe. Any lower than this, the likelihood is the heel's going to lift, weight's going to go into the toes, and you're going to drive the bar out in front. So just remember that's a nice simple cue in terms of finding out where you want to dip to in terms of your depth. Now from here, all I'm focusing on throughout my dip and drive is making sure that from side on, my dip and drive is bang on and directly straight, okay? I'm trying to get the bar going back past the height that it started on here. This is gonna let the bar continue to accelerate while I move into my receiving position. So top three things, squeeze the bum, weight in the heels, bend at the knee, torso stays upright, driving all the way up into our toe position before we move into the split. Now give that a practice before we move on to step three. So up to this point, we haven't really talked about what the arms or the upper body are doing in the jerk, because the key thing is they don't really do in the jerk. It's all about what's happening with the lower body. But what is important is how you set the bar in the shoulders or in the hands here in what I like to call our rack position. So when it comes to mastering the rack position or the setup position for the jerk, what's really important is that you make sure the bar is resting below the knuckle line or in the palm of the hands when we're set on the shoulders. Now this will mean that your front rack mobility does have to be to a certain level if you're gonna be able to master your jerk. And if you do struggle with your front rack mobility, then go check out the mobility manual, especially the shoulder protocol, as that will certainly help free up the shoulders. But we want the bar in the palm of the hands. The reason why this is important, I'm going to explain. Because if the bar's in my fingertips and I put the bar up over my head like so, okay, if I put any weight on this bar right now, it's going to drop on my head. So that means that as I'm driving the bar overhead, if I start at my fingertips, I've got to close the hand when I'm driving overhead. So that just adds a layer of complexity that we do not need. Whereas if we start the bar in the palm of the hands or below the knuckle line, it means that the hand can stay closed here and into our overhead position, which is really gonna help with your lockout. Now what I'm thinking about in my rack position is making sure that the shoulders are resting up, okay, so the bar is off my windpipe and my elbows are at 45 degrees, okay, which you'll see from that side on position. One thing though that you'll commonly see and what I also teach as well is with a beginner, I'll get them to start their elbows nice and high. The reason why you do this is because it's very difficult to use your arms from this position, which a lot of beginners do. So getting them to start with a high elbow position until they realize that the legs are doing all the work in the dip and drive, and once they become more comfortable, actually letting the elbows sit out very slightly so the elbows are more at 45 degrees so that they're quicker to lock out. But only once they've mastered the fact that the legs do the work into the overhead position. So give this a practice from a rack, get used to getting it set right up onto the shoulders and the bar in the palm of the hands. And remember, if you do struggle with that front row mobility, then have a little bit of a warm up first before you get set and practice to go in overhead. So we're now into step four, stopping your jerk from sucking. Now the thing that's important in step four is to master the lockout position. And what's really important when we talk about a solid lockout is that when we're overhead with the bar, the arms are locked straight. Now this is gonna be different person to person depending on how much extension you've got at the elbow. You'll notice for me I'm hyper mobile so my arms get into a nice lockout position very easily. But when I'm overhead, what I'm focusing on doing is always thinking about pushing that bar up against the ceiling, okay? And feeling though that once the bar's in my overhead position, my wrist is sitting back to let my elbows sit in a nice solid lockout. 
That's the key to mastering any overhead positioning and solid lockout, is not only having hands in a position that they're directly above shoulders, so you're in your most stable position, but also thinking about pushing up against the bar and letting the wrist sit back. Once you're in this lockout position, then you can just focus purely on what the lower body is doing. Common mistakes that people will make when they're going into the lockout position with the jerk, okay, is gripping too wide. The wider you go with your hands, not only does your rack position get worse, but also makes it more difficult to get in a solid lockout position. So always remember that sometimes narrow is better, even if you have super long arms. And secondly, when you're in your setup position, making sure that you meet the bar at its highest point, okay? So when I'm thinking about my dip and drive and I'm going to my jerk, I'm thinking about meeting the bar at the highest point I drive it to, never sinking into my receiving position. If you're sinking after you've received the bar, then the likelihood is you're gonna drag the bar down, that's gonna make you go soft in the shoulders, and then you're gonna get pressed out. This is a no lift in the Olympic movements. So my top tip for a solid lockout is obviously make sure you're doing accessory movements to improve shoulder strength and stability, like handstand push-ups, strict press, and SOTS press. But in terms of a technical cue to think about, try and focus on the feet landing at the same time the arms lock out. If you get these two things to align, your lockout's gonna be much sharper and it's gonna make it much easier for you to recover front foot, back foot, and you're not gonna get done for that dodgy press out. So step five, and the final thing that we're gonna talk about is gonna make you much better when it comes to mastering the split jerk, and that's the recovery. Now when it comes to recovering from the jerk, you'll we'll see a lot of people do different things when they're stepping out of their jerk. Sometimes people recover off the back leg, sometimes people from the split position will recover two steps with the front leg and then the back leg. But when it comes to best practice, the reason why you always want to recover off your front leg first is so that the weight is moving back into the center of gravity while you bring the back leg in. If you get into the habit, which I'm a sucker for doing sometimes too, of recovering off your back leg like so, the likelihood is as you do this, weight's gonna drift forward and it may increase your chances of missing the bar in front. So in order for you to have this good recovery, what you need to make sure you're doing is when you're planting into your split position, what you'll notice is there'll be a slight tendency for the weight to shift back. This is your cue from this position to push with that front leg to bring it in for a step, one or two, whatever's comfortable for you, and then bring the back leg in to its final resting position. Remember, the feet must be in line and your arms must be locked out overhead and you're stable in order to get the down signal or for this to be classed as a good repetition. So we've broken down all of the key steps that you need to be able to master in order to supercharge your jerk. So I wanna just run back over them now with you to ensure that you put these steps in place It's gonna see you hit a new PB. First things first, making sure the feet were at shoulder width apart, not having too wide a stance so we're not getting enough heart on the bar into our drive. Second thing, making sure we're thinking about driving diagonally into our split position, making a nice wide base with both toes pointing straight ahead and that back knee bent will make it nice and easy for you to set in a solid position in the catch. Second thing, for the dip and drive, making sure we're feeling the weight slightly in the heels and the torso we're staying upright into our dip position. Okay, and dipping no lower than knees being above the toes will help us get maximal heart in that bar before we move into our split. When it comes to that rack position, making sure that the bar was resting up on top of the shoulders, off the windpipe, and the bar was in the palm of the hands. Keeping those arms at that 45 degree angle, make sure that we're using the legs throughout the dip and drive and the arms aren't kicking in too early. It's such a common mistake that people struggle with when it comes to mastering the split jerk. The final thing that we're gonna go over now is the lockout. Making sure the feet were landing at the same time the arms are locking out overhead. We were letting the wrist sit back and we were meeting the bar at its highest position. This will ensure that the recovery is nice and easy, pushing away with that front leg first and then bringing the back leg in to finish. Spending as much time as possible locked out in this overhead position with your bar when you're finishing reps will help you develop strength and stability in your overhead position, which will make it nice and easy for any overhead movements. And I strongly suggest spending as much time as possible in this position if you are a beginner. So I've given you all the tips and the tricks today that you need to master in order to improve your split jerk, but I've also got a free six week training program that you can bolt on to any training that you're doing with all the right exercises and drills that you need to be doing alongside your current training to master your split jerk. 
All you need to go and do is hit the link below this video and this can be delivered to you for absolutely free by the Lifting Zone. You can tag this training program onto your training. Thank you so much again for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like, share and subscribe. Download that free program and I'll see you in my next video.